Now the Reds are being introduced. Donnie Bench going to first base. Perez. Morgan to second. Concepcion to short. Rose to third. Out to left field goes George Foster. Geronimo to center. Griffey to right field. And in just a moment, 24-year-old Don Gullett. There he is coming out from Lynn, Kentucky. That's about 100 miles from Cincinnati. And he's out for his second time. In game one, he was matching Tion. Spinning shutout innings until the Red Sox knocked him out in the seventh with six runs in the game that the Red Sox won in the opener, six to nothing. The breeze tonight is blowing in slightly against the hitters from third to first, from third to home. Can't we talk with Frank Malzone, who was following this ball club? The latter part of the year, he watched Don Gullen along with Eddie Casco, another one of the super scouts. You mentioned Ray Shaw, who followed Cincinnati, or rather the Red Sox. He told us that some games that he charted, Gullet, he threw nine of ten fastballs. A couple of games, he threw up to eight fork balls, which moves down and away sometimes to right-handed hitters. Hard curveball. He doesn't throw too many off-speed pitches, so they'll be geared for the fastball, and the Red Sox are a pretty good fastball hitting club. But he has an amazing fastball when he's right. Here's a four way look at Gullet. He has a fork ball, too, that you'll see that'll be a peculiar looking pitch to you. That's his off speed pitch, fork ball. Cuts his fastball for his slider, curveball. Here he is in slow motion. Don Gullet, certainly one of the best left handers in the game. He was all state in baseball, basketball, and football during his high school career at Kentucky. In the June 1969 free agent draft, he was Cincinnati's first choice and they chose wisely. He has the best one and loss percentage of any active pitcher right now in the major leagues with 80 wins and 41 losses. Nothing and one in the World Series. An amazing season for him. He was out two months with a broken thumb and still wound up with 15 wins. The Red players think Marty Brenneman that he would have been maybe a 25 game winner had he pitched all the way. And here you go now for the play by play. Thanks very much Kurt and hello again everybody Juan Benicas will lead it off for the Boston Red Sox this big game the final game of the three game set here in Cincinnati before we once again change scenes and head back toward Fenway Park in Boston on Saturday afternoon. Benicas waiting swinging and fouling away the first pitch. Kurt and Tony talking about Don Gullett he might well be Tony the best all around athlete on this Cincinnati Reds ball club. Feels his position well, an outstanding pitcher, a, a pretty good hitting pitcher, good speed. This guy can pretty much do it all. Two strikes quickly on Benitez. I guess anybody who can score 70 some points as we look at Denny Doyle, what 72 in a football game's got to be pretty good. <laughs> now, wait a minute now, only 11 <laughs> touchdowns though, six <laughs> extra points. <laughs> Grounded to the right side, Joe Morgan will play it, and Benitez an easy out. That was the fork ball, I believe, Marty. Down and away from the right-handed hitter. Denny Doyle will be up next for Boston. Doyle, so far in this World Series, has had five hits and 17 times up. And as we pointed out, this man, uh, pretty much a veteran of Major League Baseball, Philadelphia, the California Angels, the club the Red Sox picked him up from, and certainly an outstanding deal for Boston. This guy did a job for him, batting 310 and 298 overall. Gullet hoping for better things tonight and throwing nothing but strikes here to the first two Boston hitters. And he and Morgan have showed us how to play second base in this series. Gullet's first World Series decision, a losing one against Tion and the Red Sox Saturday afternoon. Breaking ball is by the first baseman. That'll be in for at least a pair. As you see the right fielder Ken Griffey running the ball down here's Doyle he'll go to third the throw from Concepcion and not in time. So Denny Doyle immediately putting instantaneous pressure on Don Gullett and the Reds with a bouncing ball between Tony Perez and the foul line and here's Ken Griffey we talked about that problematical era area in right field in the first game of this series here Griffey having problems hitting Concepcion with the throw to Pete Rose not in time and Doyle is in with a one out triple. That was still a great throw by Concepcion. It didn't look like it even be close and it ended up to be a fairly close play at third. 
Interesting the way they defense Doyle. They played him to hit the left field, and yet they threw him an off-speed pitch, enabling him to pull the ball by Perez. The infield's in. Fastball is up to Carl Yastrzemski. Denny Doyle leading off at third base, a one-out triple to right field. As Boston bits to get on the board in the very first inning here. One ball and one strike. Tony mentioned the Cincinnati infield is drawn in. Series tied at two games apiece. And that's a strike, and plate umpire George Maloney appeared to have to think about that pitch for a moment before calling it strike two. Well, the expression you just saw on Yastrzemski's face told you what he thought about the pitch. He thought it was inside and high. Johnny jerked the ball in just a little. That's going to be deep enough to get the run in. Griffey makes a play, and here's Doyle tagging and coming on in with the first run of the game. The Red Sox go out in front here in the first inning. Carl Yastrzemski picking up his third World Series RBI as Denny Doyle gets a glad hand as he heads back to the Red Sox dugout. And with two down and nobody on, the batter will be catcher Carlton Fisk. That's a little different bench than the beginning of the game yesterday. They were a little bit subdued, sitting back on their haunches a little. This with a home run two nights ago here. That's been a strange series in that respect. Six home runs in the World Series so far, and all of them coming in one game on Tuesday night. There's Don Gullett's wife. High school sweetheart. All in one strike to Fisk. Red Sox with a run home, two down. Well, at first shaking Johnny Bench off, now throws. Check swing by Carlton Fisk, and it pays off for him. Two balls and one strike. We mentioned George Maloney as a plate umpire. Satch Davidson of the National League at first, Art France of the American League at second. National League umpire Nick Colosi, the umpire at third base. Two balls and two strikes along the left field foul line from the American League Larry Barnett working the right field line is Dick Stello. Don Gullett two balls and two strikes with Carlton Fisk. And that's all for Fisk as Gullett picks up his first strike out on the Red Sox are out in the first inning a good beginning however one run on one hit at the end of a half inning of play Boston won the Reds coming to bat. Jam Pack Riverfront Stadium as we go to the bottom of the first inning. The Red Sox have already put one on the board against left hander Don Gullett. And now the Reds will go to bat and hit off the right hander Reginald Leslie Cleveland, a 13 game winner during the 1975 season. Cleveland making his second appearance in this World Series and his first start. Tony, how about this guy? Got a good slider, pretty good sinking fastball. Usually has good control, does not strike out a whole lot. But. Through August and September, Marty, they tell me that he was the most consistent Red Sox pitcher. Pitched some awfully good games for the Red Sox down the stretch. Pete Rose, as always, leads it off for Cincinnati. Strike to him. Rose has had four hits and 15 times up. He could have about eight hits with the line drives he's hit in this series. Count even to him at one ball and one strike. Rico Petroselli over at third base, playing about even with the bag. Rose, of course, a switch hitter. Cleveland back, and the pitch is fouled off to the left. That'll be out of play. Tony, the uh, Red Sox players, and even the Cincinnati Reds that we're talking to, think Cleveland is really at the best when he has that high inside fastball going for himself. He can move the hitters off the plate, come back with the breaking stuff. He can spot the ball pretty well, like Rick Wise, when they each have their control. High and tight, low and away, moves the ball around. Throws behind to him, and here's a base hit. The Stella Cast is presented by Authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. Major League Baseball has a right of approval of the announcers for this event. Marty, you gave us a good Scotty report to start off yesterday's ball game when Morgan got on. You said Griffey's going to hit and run. 
What's going to happen today? Well, I know Sparky said earlier tonight, Tony, that they're going to try and run and run at will and hopefully often against this guy and that he has a slow move to the plate. Slow delivery to the plate, but I doubt whether Rose is going to be going here. Now, Griffey attempts to put one down but did not get it. You know, you get talking to the players. I asked a uh, Red Sox manager, Daryl Johnson, the one player that surprised him a little bit in the series, and he said, Ken Griffey. We knew he was good, but he said he's even better than I thought. He hits the ball harder. Of course, we knew he was fast, but he said the Reds have a great young player in the making here. It's interesting you make that point, Kurt, because Sparky said earlier today the one thing that surprised him about Boston is that Dwight Evans is a much better right fielder than he had been told. Quickly strike two. Not that he was not told that Evans was a good right fielder, but Sparky said it was almost incomprehensible to him that the guy could be as good as he is. Rose was talking about the home run decoy he gave him. He said, how about a young kid doing that to me? <laughs> <laughs> Rose over at first base. Cleveland goes that way. He's quick to first base, Marty. As you said, he is a little bit long going to home plate, kicking that left knee. But he's quick to first. Well, it looked like Griffey got around on it, and the third base umpire said he did. That's Nick Pelosi down there who called Griffey out on the appeal play. George Maloney, of course, watching the ball, see where it is in the strike zone. Pelosi calls the play. That'll bring up second baseman Joe Morgan. He has not hit well in this series. Has been up 14 times, has had three hits, has knocked in a couple of runs, but of course had the game winning base hit here on Tuesday night in the 10th inning. He says the best pitch Tiant threw him, he popped up to end the ball game last night. Right over the plate to him, and he popped it up. Reggie Cleveland having struck out Ken Griffey off speed pitches at the letters for a call strike. Checking the Boston defense for you around the infield Yastrzemski Doyle Burleson and Petroselli in the outfield left center and right Benicas Lynn and Evans with Carlton Fisk behind the plate. Strike is called. I have once Morgan likes to hit in these kinds of situations with a man on first base being held out. He's such a good pull hitter. He takes advantage of that hole between Doyle the second baseman and Yastrzemski. Nothing in two the count on Joe Morgan with Pete Rose at first one down in the Reds first inning. <laughs> Evans will play it in right field. Here comes Rose to third. Look at that rifle on Evans's part but cut off by Burleson and well here comes the Cincinnati Reds. Looked like he made a bad pitch to Morgan Tony a two strike pitch. He hung out a frozen rope. Sparky Anderson we talked last night about where he likes to sit when his team is in the field when his team is hitting he likes to be right there by the man who knows the hitters well and that's batting coach Ted Klazuska. Well first and third one out you would think Morgan's in a steel situation but with Perez in a slump that he is if Joe should go down he might put Johnny on to get to Tony set up a double play. Let's see if Morgan plays it by the book or if he takes off. Well, the crowd coming to life early here at Riverfront Stadium. The Reds have had back-to-back -back hits from Pete Rose and Joe Morgan. Cleveland throwing high to Carl Yastrzemski as Rose broke quickly off the bag at third base. Throws that way again. Reds hitters have found the Boston pitching somewhat tough at times in this series. Boston has out hit them. Now to bench. A good pitch out away from him. Johnny so far has been up 16 times with four hits. He's had a home run and has knocked in three runs. Another throw on to first and another high throw. We don't know if Joe's going or not, but he's been giving a lot of decoys, knee fakes, head fakes, as if to go to see if he can get a good pitch for Bench. There goes Morgan. Bench does not get it. Throw to second. Cut off by the second baseman, Denny Doyle. Huh? There's Joe. No chance for Cotton Fisk. And Denny Doyle all the way was cutting it off. He was looking at that runner at third base, Pete Rose. He didn't want him to score. Johnny had a good pitch high and in fastball to hit just gets rid of the ball but when Morgan's got everything going for him forget it. 
It's two strikes on Johnny Bench. The Reds now have second and third occupied with nobody out. The Red Sox are leading by a score of one nothing. Rather one out in the inning. Godspeed pitches outside. Talked about the hitting comparison between the two teams. The Red Sox have out hit the Reds 40 to 28 coming into tonight's game. Catch rose his tag. He's coming to the plate and he's going to be out of there. Whoa. Juan Benique is catching the line drive to left off the bat of bench. The Reds are out in the first inning. We saw Benique yesterday down the left field line, shy away from the ball that A makes out of a great catch. But look at the throw to get Pete Rose. Right on the money off the artificial surface where you get the true hop and a good tag by Fest. Benique, of course, is not in good as left as Rick Miller. Or uh, Carl Yastrzemski, but on this play, a perfect strike. He charged the ball right there, and Fisk has the tag waiting for Pete Rose sliding in. Big first inning play for Boston. That ends the inning at the end of one. It's a Red Sox one, the Cincinnati Reds nothing. Fred Lynn standing in for openers to begin the second as Gullett misses outside to him. Well, they say momentum is the name of the game in a short series, and Boston certainly has had more of it than the Reds have had so far. Should be a routine play for Pete Rose. Let's take a look at the end of that play, the double play, Benitez to Fisk, and watch Fisk get out of the way. Remember, he got his knee tore up very severely in a collision at home. He used to block the plate. Right now, he's just making the one-hand tag like Bench, trying to get out of the way. Hey, I've uh, been talking to both Bench and Fisk about each other. Fisk says, I do it my way. Bench does it his way. Don Gullett came with some kind of heater right there to Rico Petroselli, strike one. And Petroselli has been a, well, a hitting surprise in this series. He's had seven hits and 15 times up. He and Rick Burleson are tied for the most hits. Back three infielders of the Red Sox, Doyle Burleson and Petroselli, are the only players on both teams who have hit safely in every game. 1-1 one, one the count. <laughs> 24-year-old Don Gullet. This guy has been money in the bank for the Cincinnati Reds. He has his second strikeout. He is throwing hard now, Marty and Kurt. I only did that first inning. Oh, yes. This is the Gullet that Tony and I have seen on the game of the week times and that Marty Brenneman has seen a lot during the year he has more velocity tonight than he had last Saturday in Boston. Well Kurt as you mentioned earlier had he not been out for the two months with a broken thumb the people here in Cincinnati certainly Sparky Anderson felt like he would have been a lead pipe since to win 25 games. Here's Darren Dwight Evans a right fielder a ball is high. All you've got to do is look at the expressions or the way the hitters check their swing to see how hard a guy is throwing. Boston leading one thing broken bat. That's George Foster. That's a second out. Well, that's retires aside as Lynn pops to third Petroselli strikeout and Evans a fly ball to left at the end of an inning and a half. The Red Sox one Reds nothing. Reds will be batting in the bottom of the second and well I'll buy that. Tony Perez he's hitless in the World Series. Up 14 times as Cleveland delivers and he fouls it off. But he still has that great smile on his face around the batting cage. He's one of the classiest men I've ever met in the big leagues. He's an amazing man, Kurt. I heard a writer earlier tonight say he's one of the few guys who have had the kind of series he's had, and you can talk to him, and he'll talk to you openly about it. He's had up and down World Series at 70. He had only one hit in 18 times. <coughs> Pardon me. In 72, he came back to hit 435. Now he's struggling in the 75 series. Cleveland getting out of a first inning jam on a big play by Juan Benicas in left field and he's now a ball and two strikes on Tony Perez. Fine year for this man during the season. He got hot after the All Star game finished up with 20 homers 109 runs batted in. And he has struck out. That's number two for Cleveland. But Tony Perez continues to have his problems. Here's a Cincinnati left fielder George Foster. Foster up 15 times with five hits. Native Californian. 
Eight game winning RBIs in 1975. Is he the strongest guy in this club? I would say without question he is Tony when he hits one he really puts a charge into the baseball and probably hits it farther than anybody on this club. Ball one. Davey Concepcion will be up next. Boston with a first inning run. We're in the bottom of the second. Stan Williams, the pitching coach of the Red Sox, talks a lot about Reggie Cleveland, saying he's a man who knows how to pitch. He knows how to set up hitters. He has an idea what he wants to do. There's Stan sitting next to Johnny Pesky. But he's high and tight, and he's low away with a slider or curveball. He moves you off the plate. Al Foster going into his stalling tactic, something that we witnessed all season long. He's in, he's out. When the pitcher thinks he's ready, he'll step out in the middle of his windup. You ever say why he does all that and loses concentration? Or some guys don't like standing there. A yogi was one, Marty and Kurt, that I remember. He had to be moving all the time with a bat. Foster gets there like a statue, gets a little tense, and you can't pull the trigger as quickly. He had to be talking all the time, too. <laughs> Cleveland pops him up, and Fisk may have a play on it. Two down. Cute story on this man last night. Tony and I found out. Concepcion came to the plate. Tion on the mound. Both speak Spanish. And he yelled out, hey, you ball-headed old man. How about give me a fastball? Tion says, you get one. <laughs> and he threw him a fastball in the next pitch, and he fouled it back. <laughs> Two out. The base is empty. There's Burleson. There's Jastrzemski in the side retired. So the Reds are out in order at the end of two complete innings of play in game five. The Red Sox won. The Reds nothing. Number eight batter in the Red Sox lineup, Rick Burleson, their shortstop, will begin the third inning. This is a man that has impressed Cincinnati. Pete Rose said that fellow knows how to play baseball. Well, I think the biggest compliment you can play, pay a guy in any game, Kurt, is to call him a winner, and I think everybody on the Reds club feels this way about Burleson. Back Pete says, I don't know who taught him, but somebody taught that Burleson and Evans how to play and play the game right. That seven hits. Kind of gets a strike in off the 1-0 pitch. Don Gallon an amazing record at Riverfront Stadium this season. Ten wins and only one loss during the regular season, plus a win against Pittsburgh in the playoffs. Jam job, and it's fouled back over the netting. Pitcher Reggie Cleveland on deck. Red Sox getting to Gullet for a run in the first inning on a one out triple by Doyle and a sacrifice fly by Carl Yastrzemski. Red Sox Burleson popping it up they converge out. and Morgan in a crowd. Look at Pete. Meeting. Pete even hustled back with nobody covering from his third base spot to get the bag just in case the ball was dropped or there was a collision. Here they all come. Finally Morgan waves him off and look at Pete Rose go. So Don Gullett appears to be picking up ahead of steam since that triple by Doyle. He's retired six batters in a row and working out of Reggie Cleveland. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Cleveland down a strike is not batted in two seasons. Down at 0 and 2. He was a good hitter when he hit in the National League for a pitcher. 211 lifetime batting average at 239 and 230 in his last two National League seasons in 72 and 73. He is smoking now. Since he got hurt by that fork ball that Doyle drilled in the right field corner for a triple, setting up the run, he's gone almost all fastballs. He's had three strikeouts. Go back to the top of the Red Sox batting order for Juan Benicas. Last night making his first World Series start at a hit in four times up. Vanika starting out his professional career as an infielder. 
Started in left field last night with Carl Yastrzemski moving into first base against the left hander Fred Norman and Daryl Johnson going for the same alignment tonight. Count even a ball on a strike. Well, you got a good three shot of Gullet, Benicas, and both. He loops one and Morgan on the run has got it. Red Sox are out one, two, three, and they're half of the third inning. And at the end of two and a half, one nothing Boston. Tony, this is what they used to say in your dugout about sawing the bat handle off. He really got him on the fist. Look at the expression on Benicia's face. And certain pitchers, overpowering pitchers, throw heavy ball. And I believe talking to some of the hitters around the league, that's what Gullet throws. It feels like you're hitting a lead weight, even if you hit it on the good part of the bat at times. Here's Cesar Geronimo beginning the Cincinnati third and I'll tell you this guy has had some kind of fine two games at Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium two hits night before last a three hit evening last night. Freddie Lynn tracking it. One out. Ray Shore, your super scout that you mentioned in the opening, was talking a lot about Fred Lynn before the ball game, about how graceful he is and how very often before the ball is hit, he's got two or three straps in the direction the ball is going to be hit. It's an excellent jump. Now Don Gullett with one out. Talk about pretty good hitting pitchers. Gullett would certainly fall into that category. 238 last year, 226 this season. Strike to him from Cleveland. Opening game of the playoffs against Pittsburgh had a home run the first ever in his professional career with a man on. The Reds have had two hits off Cleveland. The Red Sox one hit off Gullet. And it has been a game pretty much of strikeouts so far. Gullet has fanned three and three innings in Cleveland right now working on his third. Down 0 and 2 to Don Gullet. And that's his third strikeout. You know, he's got a good pass ball himself tonight. But he looks slow compared to the way Gullet's going. Yet Cleveland has been excellent. That's right, Kurt. It gives you a pretty good idea of how hard Don Gullet can throw. Pete Rose has had one of the two Cincinnati hits. Get an idea of how strongly Rose finished. It doesn't look like he's using that bat that he brought out here earlier. Maybe you can tell our fans are starting that bat he had. Well, he had a bat that was made of solid oak that he got from a teacher of one of his children and uh, let Bill Plummer use it during batting practice. He hit some real shots and Rose kind of liked it. Said he might use it in the game tonight, but uh, so far apparently has not. What, Tony, 40 ounces? He said he wanted to see how hard Cleveland's throwing first. If he's throwing <laughs> too hard, he said, I can't get it around. <laughs> said it is impossible to break it. Now Cleveland a pitch away from putting Rose on with what would be the first walk of the game. Reggie Cleveland coming over to the Red Sox from the St. Louis Cardinals a couple of seasons ago. There's a call strike. He joined the Red Sox along with Diego Segui and fielder Terry Hughes and the Cardinals got pitchers John Curtis Lynn McLaughlin and Mike Garman and as things turned out a pretty good trade for both clubs. Rose is on. Marty, that was one of those trades as we watched old Charlie Hustle go to it again down first base. One of those trades that took a year to develop and be successful as Cleveland had some knee problems. Wise had an arm problem. But Dick O'Connell is seeing the fruits of it in this World Series. Kenny Griffey, one of the three strikeouts that Cleveland has chalked up. Reggie got him swinging in the first inning. Boston won the Cincinnati Reds nothing as we play baseball in the home third in game five of the 1975 World Series. Nice play by Denny Doyle. Well he timed the jump just right to pick it off. Doyle with a fine defensive play as he heads back on toward the dugout at the end of three Boston leading the Cincinnati Reds one to nothing. Here's a tail end of that looping line drive. Cleveland jammed Griffey with it. Doyle timing the play perfectly. And it seems like so far in this series, the Red Sox have been coming up with the plays when they need them. Here again with Rose on first base, they might have had something going first and third. 
Top of the fourth inning, and Denny Doyle, who's had the only hit off of Don Gullett, the triple, he scored the run, and Gullett backing him off the plate. Some kind of World Series for this guy. Ball two. Some kind of a season since June. Week after week, month after month for him. Longest hitting streak in the American right. League. 22 games straight he hit in. <laughs> well, a little bit early. Sign huh. saying. Go Reds light up something for Christmas. <laughs> light up, light for, up Christmas. for Christmas. That's all. <laughs> Two and one the count on Doyle. Gullett slides one over on the inside. He's got the right outfit on tonight. About <laughs> 150 degrees here. On deck for the Red Sox, Carl Yastrzemski. He's got to feel awfully silly though, doesn't he? Chopper. Easy play for Johnny Bench. One away. The Doyle anyway. Gunn has gone more to the breaking balls. He threw him three of four pitches for breaking balls. Here's the play and Johnny Bench and his reaction from behind home plate. Gunn an excellent fielder but he gives ground to Bench who gets into the fair territory not to hit the runner. That was an easy play for Bench but he's made two beauties and balls topped out in front of the plate. He sure has Kurt. Here's Kari Yastrzemski had a fly ball to knock in a run of the first. There you go again, Tony. The off-speed pitches. RBI for Yastrzemski is third in this series. That one hit well. There's Geronimo. Harry had a chance to see Cesar in action. We've talked so much about Freddie Lynn and the graceful manner in which he goes after a ball. Take a look at Cesar Geronimo. He is considered by many the best in the National League and Sparky Anderson, obviously, the best in baseball. Sparky Anderson says... Lynn's a great young player, but he can't compare to my man, Geronimo. I think he's the best there is. The range, the arm, the jump on the ball. Guy started out in the New York Yankee organization as a pitcher. Converted him to the outfield, was at Houston. Of course, came to the Reds in that big deal in 71. Carlton Fisk, the two-out hitter. Well, it got him looking in the first inning. He also finished the season strong. Also has hit very well in postseason play. Two balls and no strikes. Marty, a lot of the clubs in the National League, the Dodgers for one, use that radar gun during the season to time their pitchers. Has that gun ever been put on Gullet? Not to my knowledge, Tony. I don't think it has. Uh, they put it on Louis Tiot here last night and clocked his off-speed stuff at 52 miles an hour and his fastball at 83 miles an hour. Be interesting to see how they clock Gullet. Gullet has thrown some today that look like they're 100 plus. That's two balls right. and two strikes, and there was a good heater again. I'll tell you, he's locating much better tonight than he did Saturday at Fenway. It's just getting a piece of the ball. Saturday at Fenway, he did what so many left-handers do in that ball, that ballpark, try and keep the ball away from right-handed hitters too much, and they miss outside and get in trouble. Fisk for the second time. He has four and he set him down in order for the third straight time. In the middle of the fourth inning, Boston won, Cincinnati nothing. Now you see the Cincinnati Reds mascot. He's known as Mr. Red and pretty much of an everyday, every night figure around Riverfront Stadium when the Reds are playing here during the season. Quite a load he's carrying on the top of his shoulders. Meet of the batting order for the Cincinnati Reds, Joe Morgan to start it off. Had a base hit in the first inning when the Reds threatened but could not get on the board and trail one nothing here. I got to kick some rider ass Morgan you get on base a lot don't you. So that's what I'm paid to do. <laughs> Pounding ball foul. Then he added that's what separates me from the average ball player. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, Kurt, nobody will ever accuse Joe Morgan of not having a lot of confidence in his own ability. Well, he was honest about it. I mean, he wasn't bragging. He was just stating a fact. That's a pretty good credentials to back it up. Oh, good pitch by Cleveland. One of the first straight change-ups he's thrown looked almost like a screwball as we look at Bench on deck.
Two strikes on Joe Morgan. Once again, you get an idea as we look at the Boston Red Sox outfield of how much room they give Joe Morgan along the left field foul line and also in left center field. Look at the tremendous amount of area along the left field line and also in the power alley in left center. Check the swing. Uh, Cleveland's unhappy with that call. He came five, six feet down off the mound to get on the home plate umpire George Maloney. He thought the ball caught the outside corner. Tiant got on the umpires at Fisk in last night's ball game. Morgan walking 132 times during the season to set a club record. Cleveland throwing 2-2. Appeared to be a little bit upset with himself on that pitch. A tribute to uh, Morgan's strength for his size, how deep Fred Lynn is playing him, because Lynn plays usually a fairly shallow center field, but he's way back there, and so is Evans. You know, this little guy can hit a ball a long way. 17 home runs in the year. Towering fly ball that Evans should have no trouble with, and that will be out number one. Johnny Bench, a man who hit that line drive to left in the first inning with runners at first and third, and Juan Bonique is making the catch and throwing a strike to Carlton Fisk to get the double play that ended the inning. I hit by a number of different injuries during the season. I'll find its way back into the stands along the right side. Marty, they tell me that the two men at the plate right now, Bench and Fisk, the course, playing defensively, studied those scouting reports, committed them to memory more than anybody else. And they're the guys back there who are the generals. They move the outfielders and infielders around. Petroselli. I'll tell you, if there's been one consistent thing in this series, it's been the fact that the Reds have hit the ball at times very hard, but right at people. Here's Petroselli now on the line drive by Bench. One quick step to his right. He leaves the artificial surface, and he's got it. And that's what the scouting reports will do, the advanced reports. They position you correctly so you can catch those hard hit balls. That is if your pitcher does his job. Well, there's a blast in the deep left center field. Boy, he's happy. He clapped his hands as he rounded first base. He finally broke out of it. 0 for 15, and Tony Perez makes his first 1975 World Series hit a big one with a game time fourth inning home run. Reds dug out a little bit happy, you might say, and Joe Morgan there all smiles. Sparky Anderson, they love to see this guy hit. George Foster waiting for things to quiet down a bit. The Reds have now reached Cleveland for three hits, and that home run tied it up at a run apiece. Not only was Perez 0 for 15 before the home run, he was 0 for 19, including his last playoff game, and that is first. Lifetime World Series homer. There's Tony Perez. Now Foster. A ball. Foster popped to Fisk his first time up. Now a pop to Gostremski will handle. Off for the Reds in inning number four. They get the tying run on Perez's home run. And as we go to the fifth inning, the Reds won, the Red Sox won. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by Major League Baseball. Now well, we've had three barn burners as you take a look at Tony Perez, a guy who had his first lifetime World Series home run to tie this game up. Freddie Lynn leading off the fifth for Boston and swings and misses. Three straight one run games and a 1 1 tie here. One ball and one strike to Lynn. Lynn feels he's in a slump. He hasn't hit the ball well. He's got a hit here and there, but he says he's pulling off the ball, striding toward first base. 
and that's what it makes them do, go after bad pitches. That's a fastball you've got to lay off when you're facing Don Gullett. It's an impossible thing to do sometimes. It moves so much. That one high in the strike zone really has velocity and movement. bringing it tonight his fifth strikeout and with the exceptional stuff he's had he hasn't walked a batter which makes him even rougher he is now retired 10 11 12 in a row during the year he averaged as far as strikeouts are concerned about five and a half per nine innings average slightly over three walks per nine innings facing Petroselli ball one Two balls and no strikes. As I recall, was struck out on the second. Excuse me, Marty. As I recall, Gullet didn't have much minor league experience, did he? Played only 11 games, Tony, and that was in the lower minor leagues. He got to the big leagues in a hurry. Two balls and one strike. On deck for the Red Sox, right fielder Dwight Evans. Red Sox getting a run in the first. The Reds with the homer by Perez in the last inning. As Griffey and Geronimo converge on the ball. They more often than not let that man play it. At this point, Don Gullett uh, just about has the Red Sox hitters overmatched the way he's throwing the ball. His fastball is really darting around. We're going to try and get some shots from you. Maybe in slow motion from this angle to see if we can see the movement on the ball as it comes to the plate. Boston hitter is Dwight Evans. He flied to left field his first time up in the second. He sends one into left center field. Now Geronimo will do his thing as he slows to a trot. And that is now four consecutive innings that Gullah has set him down in order after four and a half, a 1 1 ball game. Well, we've had four and a half innings of bang bang baseball in the fifth game of the 75 World Series. Reggie Cleveland, Don Gullett, a 1 1 tie. And here to carry you the rest of the way in game number five, Kurt Gowdy. Uh, our ears are being bothered by that pop of uh, Gullett's passball <laughs> in the Johnny Bench's mitt. You just don't see a fellow throw as hard as he is tonight. But he's being matched by quite a pitcher here, Reggie Cleveland. So we're going now to the last of the fifth inning. One run, one hit. The Red Sox, one run, three hits for Cincinnati. Concepcion, Geronimo, and Gullet, the bottom third of the Red batting order. We've had only one walk in the game. Cleveland walked Rose in the third. That one is fouled over and back of the red dugout out of play. Sparky Anderson says I'd like to win tonight. I'd hate to go to Boston behind because we would not be able to make a mistake at Fenway Park. Ian Big Clue talking there. And of course he's got his ace going tonight. Gullet. That's a strike. 0 oh and 2 to Dave Concepcion. He grounded out his first time. On deck, Geronimo. Uh, one through eight batting order that is almost relentless. Just don't have a let up in it. Exception leading off, last of the fifth inning. Hard ground ball to Petroselli. Up with it. A throw in time. He has probably never played a better third base than he's playing in this World Series. That gets to be a little tricky. You mentioned earlier, Marty, that little seam. And when the ball comes off the artificial surface, it was right on the edge of the seam in the grass. It can be a little bit of a problem, but Petroselli wisely got in front of the ball, kept it in front of him like a catcher would. Throw out Concepcion. Cesar Geronimo. Three hits last night. A homer and a single the night before. Flying out on his first time tonight. Game tied, one all, last of the fifth inning. 
Cleveland giving him some kind of a slow breaking pitch for ball one. Kurt, in the fourth inning, they started swinging a little bit better at Cleveland. He got a few pitches up. Morgan just missed the ball. He popped up the right field. The last one was hit sharply. Cleveland's down low now to Geronimo, that low breaking stuff. A ball and a strike. Don Gullett, the pitcher of the Reds, will be up next. Bill Lee will pitch Saturday in Boston. Jack Billingham for the Reds. That one's hit off the handle to Denny Doyle. The throw. Oh, that Geronimo went down that line and nearly beat that one out. Two down. Gullick getting a hand. He gave up a run in the first inning. On Doyle's triple and Yastrzemski sacrificed fly, and since then he's been untouchable. That extra day's rest probably has helped him too. He could have come back last night, but they wanted to try Norman here and then pitch Gullet tonight. You know, a lot of people are really questioning Sparky Anderson about his rotation, Kurt, and that with Gullet pitching tonight, of course, eliminates him from pitching a possible seventh game. Well, he'll be out in the bullpen if they go in the seventh game. Absolutely. So Sparky said tonight he didn't know who he'd pitch. He said, I may pitch my entire staff. If I have to. Tiant, if they go seven games, will start for Boston. And Gullet has a base hit up the middle. The Reds have four hits to Red Sox, one hit. Gullet showing you what kind of an athlete he is. Here's Pete Rose. He's been on twice. He's singled and walked. Rose is uh, he's always talking to somebody the umpires the opposition somebody asked Sparky Anderson do you resent that he's always seems to have his nose in something he said no he's like me he's nervous he said he can't sit still in the hotel lobby he's got to get up and move around two down double to the first game tied one all last to the fifth Rose trying to hit that hanging curveball Got off the elevator yesterday after the ball game on the ground floor level, and all of a sudden the riders got off, and some kid came sliding right into the elevator door. Guess who it was, Marty? Pete Rose Jr. <laughs> That's your life. <laughs> Googie. It's his nickname. You got more pep, the old man? He sure yeah. does. One strike. There's a drive. That's a tough chance. There's a fair, and it is a fair ball in the corner. Dullard is being waved on. And he is in the score. Rose holds it second. Rose doubled to the left field corner. Carlson really mad down at the third base back. He kicked that third after the overthrow of the cutoff man. There goes Benitez into the corner. The ball sliced away from him. He got the ball pretty quickly, but then he made his mistake when he overthrew it. With Gullet's speed, I don't think they'd have gotten him anyway. Carlson very upset. One of the few fundamental mistakes that Red Sox have made so far in this series. Overthrowing a cutoff man. Well, Rose has had a perfect night with a single, a walk, a double to the left field corner. He has an RBI, and the Reds have the lead two to one. Ken Griffey has struck out and lined out. Rose at second. All this came after two out, nobody on. A ball to Ken Griffey. Joe Morgan scheduled up next. We're going to get some action in the Red Sox bullpen. He pops it up and an inside out swing. Petroselli in foul ground puts it away. The Reds had a run. They had two hits. They left one at the end of five. Cincinnati two and Boston one. That's Jim Willoughby, a right-hander, and Roger Moretta, a left-hander, warming up in the Red Sox bullpen. 
We're down to the tail end of the Red Sox batting order. Rick Burleson is leading off. Reggie Cleveland scheduled up behind him. Don Gullett. High with that fastball. He's allowed only one hit, a triple by Doyle in the first. With one out, then Doyle scored on Yastrzemski's sacrifice fly. And no other Boston runners reach base. Fly ball right out to Griffey. Almost in his tracks. One down. He is now retired 14 in a row. Reggie Cleveland coming out. He struck out his first time. He's hardly showing the right handed hitters any breaking pitches at all. The left handers, just Stremsky and Doyle, he's thrown some breaking balls too, but he's gone to his heater, the right handed hitters. He's high to uh, Cleveland for a ball, 1 0. Oh. No walks. He had this remarkable talent and don't walk anyone. It'll be very tough to beat tonight. Two balls and no strikes. That's Benicus on deck. There's a strike, two and one. Bella working on a one hitter. Now he's in danger of walking his first batter three and one to the opposing pitcher. He's had a couple of easy innings thrown in there too so he could be strong if he goes to the seventh eighth and ninth. The three one delivery he pours it over for a strike three and two to Reggie Cleveland one away nobody on Cincinnati ahead of Boston two to one in the sixth. Strikeout number six. Let's look at it from our center field camera in slow motion. You can see the effort behind Gullett's pitch. He throws a little across his body. And Reggie Cleveland just playing over Matts as the ball is almost in Bench's glove. That one tailed away from Cleveland. Some have been darting in, some have been taking off. A live arm. Six strikeouts, no walks, one hit. Benicus the batter. Top of the Red Sox order. That ball popping into Johnny Bench's mitt. A little bit outside, 1 0 to Juan Benicus. Denny Doyle on deck. Benicus is shaded to the opposite field. They played him straight away last night, but the stuff that Gullet has tonight, they're playing the batters, especially the right handers, to swing late. Two balls and no strikes. He's got the kind of fastball today that some catchers will put an extra sponge in their glove for. Now he's behind three and nothing. Here's Don Gullett's motion and as Tony said oftentimes a catcher will put that extra bit of sponge in his glove and Johnny Bench will do that on occasion when Don Gullett is on the mound. Now Gullett comes right back in with a fastball for a strike three and one two down nobody on Cincinnati ahead two to one. There is the first base runner for the Red Sox since the first inning and the first walk issued by Gullet. Benikasan, two down, and Denny Doyle has the only hit for Boston tonight, a triple to right field in the first. And he has scored the lone Boston run. Benikas has good speed. Gullet, a tough man to steal off. He doesn't have a good move to first, but he's very quick to home plate. They tried off in the first game in Boston, and Ben's gun to run around at second. He's short, compact, gets the ball to home plate in a hurry. I think that's an understatement. <laughs> I mean, it's before he even releases the ball, he's got good, quick motion to home. 0 oh, and 1 to Denny Doyle. Benicus attempted 17 steals this last year, successful seven times. There's a ground ball to Perez at first. Doyle is out. And so are the Red Sox. No runs, no hits, one left. Go to the last of the sixth inning. NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Joe Morgan leads off for the Reds in the last of the sixth inning, followed by Johnny Bench and Tony Perez. And Moret and Willoughby are still warming up in the Red Sox bullpen. Gullet 
threw only 54 pitches in the first six innings. He's young and he should be fresh and strong. Curveball is outside to Joe Morgan. Joe's built up that reputation, and some say he gets a lot of close pitches. The pitchers will tell you that. Joe looking back at Carlton Fisk said, what are you talking about? Ball's a quarter of an inch outside. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0 pitch. Two and nothing. Now, as Pee Wee Reese used to say, eyes like an eagle. Louis Tion, 116 pitches last night through six innings. Tion wound up throwing over 160 pitches last night. Now it's ball three by Cleveland to Morgan. There's El Premier, El Tiante, taking it easy tonight. The 3 0 delivery. Three and one. Reds out hit the Red Sox five to one tonight. Two runs, five hits for Cincinnati. One run, one hit for the Red Sox. Slashes it foul down the first base line. Marty, I get the feeling that when Joe Morgan was down in Houston, he had no idea at that time how great a player he might be. No question about that, Tony. In fact, Joe had the reputation of being a very moody, introverted type of player, and he came to Cincinnati, and this winning tradition seemed to bring him out. That pitch just missed inside. Morgan turned around and yelled something at home plate. Something to Carlton Fisk. Carlton Fisk might have been badgering home plate up by George Maloney. And after look at Cleveland, he has steamed. He thought he missed two pitches. Let's look at it. We've got a different angle, of course. We're not directly behind the pitcher. A little bit off. Well, he Morgan has a close look. Fisk holds it right there. May have brought it up a little bit. They thought he had it, but now Morgan is going to battle Cleveland. You can bet he's going to be going sometime, Kurt and Tony. All right, he's on first. Nobody out. The Reds are leading two to one. Bench lined into a double play to left field in the first, lined out to third in the fourth. Oh, he's ripped the ball twice tonight, right at somebody. They get Morgan back. Cleveland quick to first, but slow going home. Morgan likes that. There's a throwback. Likes to get that front foot on the artificial surface. And the back foot's on the dirt. Again, they drive him back. He says he can't accelerate as quickly as Lou Brock. Brock can take off faster than he can. Oh, closer play. <laughs> he didn't die back that time. Contrasting styles of base stealing by Brock and Morgan. Brock does not get as big a lead as Joe Morgan does. He likes to be leading in the direction. Keeps the momentum going towards second base. Morgan on first. Nobody out. Again, they drive him back. Watch him kick that left foot. He digs it in pretty well. Now he scampers back, and you can see that crossover step right over left going back to the bag. He'll do the opposite going to second. He stole a base in the first inning. He's getting back without diving, which is a pretty good sign for right. Joe. He still probably doesn't have the maximum lead he feels he can get. So he's read Cleveland pretty well. Now he and Cleveland continue to play the game. Kurt, this is a good idea of another one of the attributes that makes him so valuable to the Reds. He can really disrupt the pitcher's concentration with this type of thing. Bench finally gets a chance to get into the act. <laughs> 0 and 1 to Johnny Bench. He's getting a little tired watching Cleveland and Morgan go at it. How about me? Reds are leading 2 to 1. They're batting in the last of the sixth inning. Really working on Morgan. Again, Whoa. really threw it away. Oh. 
Clemens got the short, quick move. Yastrzemski with a nice play right there. Morgan diving back that time. Somebody's going to be worn out when this is all over, either Cleveland or Morgan. Who's made about seven or eight moves to first base. The count is one strike, the bench. Again. Think about me and forget about him. That's what Morgan's saying. Keep me on your mind. You're going to forget John at the plate. Now the fans booing Reggie Cleveland for his continued move to first. We still have a one strike count to the forgotten Johnny Bench. There goes Morgan. And the pitcher's foul back. Morgan had the jump. Bench fouls it back, and it's an 0 2 count to Johnny Bench. You got to look here of Joe Morgan's jump, and he got a pretty good one there on Reggie Cleveland and coming to the plate, but Bench fouls it off, and Joe Morgan with a pretty good philosophy. Tony, he says in situations like this, he'll give the batter no matter who it will be, and normally it's either Johnny Bench or Tony Perez. He'll give him a strike, but after that, he's going to be going sometime. All right, a two strike count to bench. The Reds are ahead two to one, last of the sixth. You wonder now with two strikes on bench in the hole as he is, 0 and 2, if Morgan will go and disrupt bench's concentration. I don't know if it bothers Johnny or not. We'll soon find out. Cleveland's throwing an entire ball game here in this. One situation again. That's a, about the closest they've come to getting him. Now Morgan asks for time. He wants to get himself gathered. Some of the National League first basemen, Bob Watson from Houston, Ron Fairley from St. Louis, tried something new, getting off the bag in the direction of Morgan. Three or four feet sometimes, they'd follow him up the line. Want to ask Marty, did that have any success against Joe? No, it didn't, Tony. And we still have a two strike count. Morgan at first, nobody out. Yostrevsky, something's going to happen over there sometime. He's either going to steal a base or they're going to drop a ball or throw it away. Watch Yostrevsky here reaching out. He had to come off the bag, got his feet tangled. Two strikes. Now the pitch to the plate, nearly a wild pitch. One ball, two strikes to Johnny Bench. The Red Sox scored in the first. The Reds came back with a single in the fourth and a home run by Perez in the fifth. They're leading 2 1. Bench drills it in the oh. right field. Looks like Doyle got crossed up. Here comes Morgan, the third. High throw. Bounds away. Carlton Fisk stayed at home plate, and Reggie Cleveland went over there and picked up the ricochet. Kurt Marty, Denny Doyle, even though Morgan wasn't going, was breaking towards second base. He took about two steps over in the direction of second, and the double play probably would have been in order had he stayed in his position. Let's watch Morgan. Doyle has already left his straightaway position. You could see him drop his arms in disgust, knowing he left too soon, and for what reason, I don't know. Morgan now has to hustle off the arm of Dwight Evans, and out comes Daryl Johnson to talk to Cleveland. Another uh, fundamental mistake, Kurt, excuse me, overthrowing a cutoff man, allowing Betts to go to second, something the Red Sox haven't done much of this series. That's right. That's uh, The ricochet helped him, too, right back to Reggie Cleveland off the screen. In front of the Red Sox dugout. Now, manager Darrell Johnson out talking to Cleveland. And the Reds, right now, the way Gullet is pitching, are sitting in beautiful shape. They have runners on second and third, nobody out. And Johnson stays with Cleveland. There's Moret and Willoughby in the bullpen. And we had a great chance to see on that last play what Morgan does to a defense, a pitcher, a catcher. He had Doyle, even though he wasn't stealing, going cover second base. All right, the infield has to come in now. Nobody out. Morgan at third. Bench at second.
Infield in, outfield deep. A ball to Perez. He came out of it with a home run to left center in the fourth. Cleveland looks over to Morgan at third. That pitch is a high foul over toward the Reds dugout. Fisk can't get it. It drops into about the fourth or fifth row. And with a catcher down at second base in Johnny Bench, they're going to have to do some switching of these signs or he's going to relay something to Tony Perez. I'd have to believe that if Tony Perez knew what was coming, he could be dynamite up at the plate. I'd have to agree with you. One ball, one strike to Tony. Morgan's at third, Bench's at second, nobody out. Last of the sixth inning. The Reds are stirring. Look at Bench looking in, see if he can grab a sign. That's fouled away. One ball, two strikes. Just about every game, the Red Sox have about hit the Reds, but tonight it's different. Six hits for the Reds tonight to one for the Red Sox. Morgan at third, Bench at second. Nobody out. High foul. Fisk may have a play on this one. Oh! Ooh, he goes into the camera. Into the dugout. The wind is blowing in, and the wind blew the ball back. You'll recall the me. super catch he made in the stands back in one of the earlier games. He just never gives up on the ball. He tore somebody's Nikon lens apart right there. I think he's mm. looking for his mask. <laughs> I think he might have gone back over to see if he hurt anybody. Oh, heard about the kind so. of gentleman he is. He left his mask back at right. home plate. we we'll have to see if everybody's all right. I was kidding about his mask. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Runners on second and third. Nobody out. Tony Perez with that infield drawn in against him. He hits a blast in the deep left center. That's gone. Way back. Congratulating little Joe. He had a little bit to do with that, of course, and to show you the respect that Cleveland had with Morgan on third, he was pitching from the stretch to Perez. And most pitchers can't throw as hard or as effectively from the stretch as they can from the full windup. What a way to come out of a slump the way Ooh. Perez tonight. Two homers, four runs batted in. They have a break in the action here at Cincinnati. The score now, Cincinnati five and Boston one. All right, we have a new pitcher. Jim Willoughby's on. He was good in relief the other night, but he comes in behind here five to one. The last player to hit two homers in a series game was Gene Tennis back in 1972, and he hit consecutive home runs the way Perez has hit him tonight. The last National League player to hit two home runs in a game was Charlie Neal of the Dodgers in 1959. Babe Ruth, twice. The only player ever to hit three homers in a series game. Say, I wish they'd give those people up above us and all around us a microphone. They're getting on us pretty good, Kurt. <laughs> Not Marty, of course, but 
a lot of the fans, oh, wow. when they heard the first two games up in Boston, felt that we were a little bit partial to the Boston Red Sox because Kurt is a former Boston Red Sox announcer. I'm a Ten former American ago. leaguer, and yeah. Dick Stockton doing the game is the present day Red Sox announcer. But we got a stack of telegrams today from the Boston fans, I understand, saying we were partial to the Reds the last couple of days. <laughs> Which is interesting. Six of one, half dozen of the other. <laughs> I will forget doing a Rose Bowl game one year. USC, Ohio State. I still have to mail uh, about a thousand letters. Five hundred and some accused me of being prejudiced for Ohio State, and the other five hundred being prejudiced for USC. <laughs> same game, same words, same lines. George Foster is fouled out and popped up. Well, the Reds have opened up here in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. They lead now, five to one. One ball, one strike to Foster. Jim Willoughby. Sinker ball pitcher. And his delivery is two and one. Roger Moret continues to warm up. Anytime the big man Perez breaks out, that makes the Reds even more dynamite. Well, the change in the batting order for Cincinnati has reaped dividends tonight, Kirk. A 2 1 delivery. There's Tony's wife. That's the happiest wife in America right now. That's smile, too, Mrs. Perez. What a beautiful smile. Three balls, one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Three runs in. Line shot to the box. One out. Inception has grounded out twice. Since the fourth inning on, the Reds have really been swinging the bats. No matter who's on the mound, they've been hitting some shots. They look uh, to me tonight as determined. Any game in a series, they're really bearing down. And of course, receiving a great pitching performance so far doesn't hurt them. And Don Gullett. One out, nobody on. Concepcion. Low inside to him for a ball. Last of the sixth inning, five runs, seven hits for the Red. One run, one hit for the Red Sox. Outside, 2-0 to oh, Dave Concepcion. Game six will start at 12.30 Eastern time Saturday. The baseball world with Joe Garagiola. And then Bill Lee against Jack Billingham. Three balls, no strikes to Concepcion. It's that pitch over. We're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Back here in Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati. Three, two count now to Dave Concepcion. One out, nobody on. He bounds a foul over by the Red Sox dugout and in. Morgan started with a walk. Bench single. Perez Homer. Foster's lined out. And Concepcion the batter. He's hit by a pitch ball. He got hit on the right hand. That ball rode right in on him. Sparky Anderson very concerned. Willoughby's ball really tails in the right handed hitters. You see David really aggressively going after the ball. He has no chance. Looked like it might have nicked his shirt first and then picked him off on the hand. That's the kind of pitch that Jim Rice received a broken hand uh, just before the end of the season and put him out of the playoffs in the World Series. Larry Starr, along with Sparky Anderson, Starr, the trainer.
That one thrown right at a batter's head. Most of the time he gets out of the way, but if it's thrown a little bit behind you or right at your back almost as that one was, you have a tendency sometimes to back right into. But then it get him on the elbow, the forearm. It's like right at, uh, mm -hmm. at the point of the elbow. Well, that can be painful. And it's on his throwing arm, too, which if it should stiffen up will make it difficult for Concepcion to make some throws. He's a valuable piece of property. This year he didn't have quite the year they expected of him. In the meantime Dick Pohl has joined Roger Moretta in the Red Sox bullpen. This has been a long inning for uh, Don Gullett to be sitting in that dugout. Morgan and uh, Cleveland must have taken about 10 minutes for their cat and mouse game. Remember Concepcion's arms hurt not his leg. He rarely gets thrown out when he attempts to steal a base. And Willoughby long and lanky from the side not noted for quickness. That's right. Uh, Concepcion uh, swiped 33 out of 39 this year. Kurt Sparky Anderson getting uh, rookie Doug Flynn up and loosening in the Cincinnati bullpen in the event that Concepcion has to come out. Well, that elbow could stiffen up on him. Will be with his stretch. There goes the runner. There's a throwdown. And it's an easy steal for Concepcion. He's been taught an awful lot about base stealing by Joe Morgan. You can see they've got almost identical leads. One foot on the dirt, one foot on the artificial surface, and it's just no contest for Carlton Fest. The Reds now have stolen six bases in this series in eight attempts. Concepcion in second. Morgan stole in the first. Concepcion here in the sixth. Ball two, two and zero. Oh. The Cesar Geronimo. He's flied out and grounded out. There's Doug Flynn, the utility infielder, warming up. Don Gillett, the red pitcher, due up next. He blasts that one foul down the right field line. I think it's a cute story told about Doug Flynn standing out there in the bullpen. He was saying, all year long, they've been telling me how unfortunate I am to have to break in with a team that has Rose. Concepcion, Morgan, he says, now they're telling me how fortunate you are because look what it's going to pay you, about $20,000. <laughs> Tony, Sparky Anderson feels this young man is the best all-around utility infielder in the National League. The 2-1 delivery. Foul back. Well, how good is he? Can he press any of those regulars next year? I don't think he can, not with the Reds infield, uh, Kurt. He does an excellent job at second base. He can really turn the double play as good hands. That's his best position. Every club needs a good utility man though in case of injuries. That can be a key player for you. He checks the swing in his 3-2. In fact, uh, we were asking Red Sox manager Daryl Johnson about that year. Oh. <laughs> that is Johnny Bench's wife. Three two delivery. There's a bounding ball hit down to first. Two down. Concepcion moves to third. One of the surprise sports shots of all time on television. <laughs> <laughs> Standing ovation for Don Gullett. Appreciation for the one hitter he's thrown. And Don Gullett right now, bet, wishes he could get that one off speed pitch. Looked like a fork ball. He threw to. Denny Doyle, a triple in the right field corner. He might be riding on a no-hitter. And he goes out for the seventh. Don Gullett. He has struck out in single. Fouls it back. 0-1. He has pitched a one-hitter tonight. And right now has a four run lead to work on when he comes out for the seventh inning. Exception running uh, rubbing that elbow down there at third. Oh and two. There's
is Dave. Evidently he's going to come on back out and play defensive ball in the top of the seventh. The two strike pitch. Bellet strikes out. The Reds had three runs. They had two hits. There were no errors. They left one at the end of six, five one. We're watching Concepcion. He got hit on that right elbow, his throwing elbow. We're watching him in infield practice, throw over to first. He's got that right hand bandaged up, Marty. What's that from? Tony, he was hit by a pitch uh, during the season from uh, Montreal right-hander Dale Murray and suffered a small broken bone, was out maybe three weeks, and he's had it taped up heavily ever since that time. Kurt, you broadcasters know what that can be. If you get hit on that ulnar nerve, sometimes broadcasters get that from leaning on their elbows, don't they, and cupping their ear? <laughs> broadcaster's <laughs> elbow. I thought you were going to say leaning on a bar. <laughs> And if that, you know if that bothers him where he can't throw losing the, losing the feeling in that hand might mean something if he can't come back. What do you mean you broadcast. I didn't what say you. <laughs> I'm just here talking about baseball I think. I see a microphone in my face. Well let's see now here's Gullet out he's got a one hitter going for himself. He's allowed only one base runner since the first inning. The one hit was by Denny Doyle a triple in the first Doyle scored in Yastrzemski's fly ball and the first pitch to Yastrzemski the ball. Kremski a sacrifice fly and he's lined to center. He hits a bounding ball down to Perez at first. It is a foul ball. One ball, one strike. Gullet has been a tremendous pitcher in this ballpark. This year he won 10 and lost one during the regular season. He had a win in the playoffs. So he's 11 out of 12 decisions here at home in 1975. A 1-1 one -one pitch. Kremski pops it up. Perez coming on in foul ground. And the Red Sox have one down at the seventh. This is our last game of the 75 series here in Cincinnati. And as usual, we've been treated magnificently by Bob Housem, the president of the Reds, Dick Wagner, their vice president, their PR director, Jim Ferguson. All their hospitality. This is really a well run ball club here. It is a machine, not only on the field, but the way it's run, the way they merchandise and showcase baseball. No balls and one strike to Carlton Fisk. Galetta struck him out twice. The 0 1 delivery. Curve a little bit low as he goes to the breaking pitch on Fisk. Fisk being played deep straight away. Two balls, one strike. Gullet's got a good rhythm going now. He's getting the ball back, getting his sign in a hurry. He wants to throw the ball. He's anxious to pitch. Won't surprise me if the Red Sox start stepping out. This pops it up. Bench back toward the screen. And it lands on top of one of our cameras down there. That's better than on the cameraman. Two balls and two strikes. You all right down there, Al Rice? I get a kick. I uh, <laughs> saw Jack Bennett before the game. He's been with us for years. I said, where are you working? He said, hi, first. <laughs> Used to be, you know, one and back the home plate, one and back the first and third years ago. Now they have him high and low. We have 10 cameras working this ball game tonight. Foul ball. Gullet is just overpowering tonight. He's They're not getting back. around. They're popping him up. He's got a good curveball going now, too. That was, that's what that was to Fisk, a hard curve. Reds think he's the best left-hander in baseball. The way he looks tonight, I wouldn't argue. Mm. Kurt, you talk about Don Gullett. The Red Sox are seeing the real Don Gullett, and they're also seeing the real Big Red Machine for maybe the first time. The 2-2 delivery. Fisk drives it into deep left. Foster backs up the take. Line drive by Fisk to Foster and left. Now, only a left-hander would do what's going on in the Red Sox bullpen. <laughs> Bill Lee loosening up for his next start. He is pitching from a distance about twice 60 feet 6 inches. That catches way back. Tim Blackwell passed home plate. But that's Bill Lee. <laughs> oh, he's a left-hander all the way, isn't he? <laughs> Foul back by Freddie Lynn who's popped up and struck out. 5 to 1. The Reds ahead. The Red Sox batting in the 7th. Rico Petroselli. 
is the on deck batter. That's a fastball in the inside corner, strike two. Gullet is overpowering the rookie Lynn tonight. Lynn pops it up. Coming on, Geronimo waiting. And has it. And again, Gullet sails through the Red Sox lineup. We're coming to the home half the seventh with a score. Cincinnati five, Boston one. Pete Rose has had a perfect night. A single, a walk, a double. He's knocked in a run. Last of the seven, top of the red batting order. Rose, Griffey, and Morgan. Red sitting on top of a five to one lead. Tries the bunny's way on. Foul ball. Will it be on the mound for the Red Sox? Reggie Cleveland hammered out of the sixth inning. A three run homer by Tony Perez. Touch normally in the regular season. You have to get off the mound. Here's a drive by Rose in the deep left, but he's just going back, back. He'll have room and takes it on the warning track. You have to get off the mound. You want to put your hand up to your mouth. But tonight, the umpires are giving the pitcher that's about 50 degrees special permission to blow on her pitching hand. And you see Willoughby now and then do that. Ken Griffey has struck out, lined out, popped up, 0 for 3. Before Griffey went up to the plate, Joe Morgan popped out of the dugout and had a talk with him. I don't know if he was telling something about Willoughby's pitching or something about his move to first base or to home plate if he gets on. Willoughby missing outside, 1 and 0. Cincinnati leading 5 to 1, last of the seventh. There's Morgan on deck. Now he's behind him two and nothing. Red's longest losing streak at home this year has been two games. They, they lost twice, three times in a row. They've lost only 18 games there all year, including the regular season, the playoffs, and the World Series. Two and one. Well, they've got the club for everything in this ballpark. Hitting, defense, and speed. They didn't have the starting pitching for complete games, but they had the bullpen to back it up. And a great young left-hander in Gullet. In the last two months, in the last 50 Cincinnati games, the staff produced only two complete games. Both by Don Gullet. Low bounder to Doyle. And oh, the race. Scoops it over. Just trying to back it up. And uh, that's little Denny Doyle who raced over to pick up his own Arant throw. That'll show you speed when you feel as an infielder you can't even take time to take the ball out of your glove. Watch him shuffle it with his gloved hand. The only chance he had on Griffey. What a play by Fist backing it up, although the ball did not go in the dugout. He came barreling into that screen. Daryl Johnson out now, and we'll see if the information that Morgan relayed to Griffey was something about Willoughby's move if he stays in the ball game. Two left-handers warming up, so Daryl playing percentages might go to Moret, who Carl should be loose. Carlton Fisk has dived into the camera box. He slid into the wire fence in front of the red dugout trying to back up that throw. And the two left-handers are out there now, with Morgan, a left-handed batter, do up, and then Johnny Bench. Johnson sticks with Willoughby. Now that Griffey could get the first base. Mm. 38 infield hits during the season, Kurt, and that was, uh, well, a typical play right there. A slow bounding ball to the right side of the infield, and Doyle really did the only thing he could do to have any chance on it. Five to one. The Reds ahead, batting in the last of the seventh. Griffey back. 
You know, you could take a picture of the three base dealers, Morgan, Concepcion, and Griffey, where they finally end up, and their two feet would be in almost identical spots. Look at that. The same leads all taught by Joe Morgan. Griffey stole 16 out of 23 this year. The Reds set an all-time record, stealing over 80% successfully. 83% to be exact. No major league club has ever been that successful in running the bases. One ball, no strikes. To Morgan, who is single, flying out on what? That's Griffey you're looking at first, Jastrzemski holding. Marty, Joe, I understand when he was hitting in that third spot, didn't like guys running off first base to steal bases. Finally, Sparky talked and said, with two strikes, is it all right? And he said, yeah. Tony, that's a good point because it does bother Joe Morgan. As you know, some hitters it doesn't affect, some it does, and it bothered him considerably. Willoughby is trying to keep Griffey close. One ball, no strikes to Morgan. Five to one, Reds. There goes Griffey. That drive. Great stab by Burleson. A little flip to first for the double play. What a catch. He was going over to cover the bag on the steal attempt. Got in a little bit better position. You could see the expression on Morgan's face. He said, oh, almost as if he could read what was going to happen. A great play by Burleson. So at the end of seven, it's still Cincinnati five and Boston one. We're going to the eighth inning. And Don Gullett of Lynn, Kentucky, has pitched a one-hitter. Here in game five of the World Series, that hit came in the first inning. There's a high drive to deep left center by Rico Petroselli and Geronimo right back up against the wall. Well, he doesn't waste any time drawing a beat on a ball. He knows right where to go, and he's there. The balls hit high in the air, don't seem to be carrying, but of course, Tony Perez's balls were rising line drives. He hit them so hard. Dwight Evans, line out the left twice. Only two base runners for Boston tonight. Doyle, who tripled in the first, and Vanikas, who walked in the sixth. Five to one, Cincinnati. You Simon and Garfunkel fans, and there are millions in this country, they're going to be reunited this Saturday night on NBC Saturday night, 11.30 Eastern Time. What music they wrote together. Really great young entertainers. You'll see them Saturday night on NBC as you watch Rick Burleson on deck. Evan. On that sharp breaking curve by Gullet, who has everything going for him now. He's got a lead, he's got the stuff, the control. He's working very quickly. Outside, two and two. Marty, he hasn't thrown too many pitches, but is there something that Larry Shepard or Sparky Anderson look for if he is going to tire? He'll start to drop down a little bit, Tony, and Larry Shepard will normally immediately come out. Evans smacks a single up the middle. According to Sparky Anderson, Evans has been the number one player in this World Series for the Red Sox. The player that has most impressed him. Here's Rick Burleson, who's popped up and fly to right. He's had quite a series. Something unusual tonight, it's a quiet Cincinnati bullpen. They used three pitchers in the opening game, four in the second, five in the third, Four, and now suddenly McEnany goes to work. A little pop out into left center, waiting for Geronimo, and Burleson is slide out. Two down. Evans holds it first. Doug Griffin, a right hander, will come out. Eastwick, the right hander, McEnany, the left hander. Sparky's got him going. Old Captain Hooks. <laughs> well, that's it, old Captain Hook. <laughs> Sparky told me a cute story tonight. I'm walking down the street today, and a fellow stopped me and said, I want to tell you something, Sparky. You better win tonight. <laughs> and Sparky said, don't ever tell me I better do something. Wasn't Bob Housen, was it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> oh. 
He was muttering about that. Those fans said, you better win. Doug Griffin batting for the pitcher, Willoughby. This is his first appearance in the World Series, a right-hander. Denny Doyle beat him out in the latter part of the season with a second base job. Gullett sitting on top of a 5-1 lead. Evans at first, two down. Pitch is low, ball two. Anderson watching his pitcher. There's one of the all-time heroes with the glasses in Cincinnati baseball history. Big clue, Ted Klususki. He's their hitting coach. Two and one. He's also in the Polish Hall of Fame. <laughs> Where we're trying to get you. <laughs> Having a very difficult time with it, though. Carl Carlton Fisk. And the on-deck man. Or who would be on deck? Benicus was on deck, but that was Doyle you saw around the bat rack. Three balls and a strike to Doug Griffin. Only one walk issued by Don Gullett. Strike two. To Griffin, three and two. Five runs, eight hits for the Reds. One run, two hits for the Red Sox. How easy Johnny Bench makes it look. There's Evans. Evans is going. That's a line drive to Joe Morgan. And the side retires. No runs to hit one left. We're going to the last of the eight. It is still five to one, Cincinnati. Right, Simon and Garfunkel. Saturday night on NBC, and right now we're in the last of the eighth inning. I know one thing. There's one man going to get a standing ovation when he comes up tonight, and he'll follow Johnny Bench, who'll lead off the inning, and that's Tony Perez, who had gone hitless in four, 15 times, then came up in the fourth inning, hit a home run, came back up in the sixth inning, and hit a three-run homer. He's one of the all-time popular players in Cincinnati. And his fans were delighted to see a frustrated man break out of it here in the final game in Cincinnati of the 75 series. Johnny Bench lined into a double play to left, lined out to third and had a single to right. The Reds scored a run in the fourth, a run in the fifth, and three in the sixth. The Red Sox had their run in the first inning. The new pitcher is Dick Pohl. He was out with an injury this year. On deck is Perez. Cole had his jaw broken, a line drive. He has a good live arm. They say his fastball moves more than anybody's on the staff. That's what he has trouble with, the control. Good curveball. He has trouble keeping it in the strike zone. But his fastball sinks. How do you pronounce Tony's name here in Cincinnati, Marty? Kubek. <laughs> I mean the on, on deck man. Perez. Perez. I think Kubek is correct. He says Paris. Perez. I guess that's the Latin American pronunciation. Perez. But Canal said it's like saying Pete Rose. The way you say it, you fellas. <laughs> Which is uh, ball three, strike one to Johnny Bench. Pete Rose. <laughs> you can pronounce his name any way, way you want today, but put star in front of it so far in the game. Johnny Bench, 3 1 count. He's on. Here is Tony Perez coming up. Now here's a standing ovation for him. he has a chance to tie a record. Only one man in the history of the World Series has ever hit three homers in a World Series game. And of course that was the immortal Babe Ruth who did it twice. When the Babe did things he did it big. Perez has knocked in four runs tonight. The pitch is low for the ball one or nothing. The Reds are leading five to one batting in the last of the eighth inning. The Red Sox last chance in the ninth They'll have the top of their order, Benicus, Doyle, and Yastrzemski. And you can't get too careless with Bench down on first base because he'll surprise you as he has several pitchers this year. He has stolen 12 out of 12 this season. 
Fastballs outside to Perez. 2 0. Oh. Sort of puts them all to sleep and then takes off, doesn't he, uh, Marty? Yes, he does, Kurt. Most of the steals, in fact, all, every one of the steals that he had were delayed steals. That's a smart ball player. Two balls, no strikes. Three and nothing to Perez. Cole walked in. Now he's dropped behind Perez, 3 0. Oh. Perez looking down for hit or take. I have to have him swinging. They have just had the largest crowd in the 107 year history of the Reds. A standing room only crowd of 56,393. And that is, this is the first professional baseball club, you know, the old Cincinnati Red Stocking. They have a good club, Kurt. Yeah, I like them. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have the speed this, this club had. Perez walked. He didn't get a chance for that third homer tonight. Stan Williams is going to pop out now. He, Daryl Johnson has Rogelio Moret throwing a left-hander and Diego Segui a right-hander. Dick Paul has walked bench and Perez. Five to one, the Reds on top. It'll be something to see, Kurt, when we get to Fenway for game six and seven, if the right-handers continue to swing the bats. Well, uh, we'll find out at Fenway Saturday. Right now, we have a break in the action right here in Riverfront Stadium. And there's your score, 5-1 Cincinnati. Diego Segui, the new Red Sox pitcher, a man who has struggled through this year, but has never missed the call when Daryl Johnson has wanted him. He has a fork ball, fastball, and one game this season. Joe Garagio and I did a game, Kurt and Marty, and we got on Diego Segui a little bit. He was upset with us, and possibly we owe him an apology because we may have gotten on him too much and made fun of him. Diego Segui. Well, he's taking his warm-up pitches. He's waiting to face George Foster. If you've joined us late, the Red Sox scored in the first inning their lone run of the game. A triple by Denny Doyle. He came in to score and Carl Yastrzemski sacrificed fly. Then the Reds in the fourth. Perez homered. In the fifth, they picked up another run. Gullet scoring on Rose's double, and Perez had a three-run homer in the sixth. Runners on first and second, nobody out. As Foster steps in, last of the eighth inning. This is the fourth pitcher for the Red Sox tonight. Don Gullen has gone all the way for Cincinnati. High fly ball, deep right. Bench may tag at second. Evans has it. Bench is coming. Here's a throw. Oh. And it is. It hit the runner going in. Johnny in the back going into the bag. Holding at first base was Perez. We'll get a good shot right here to see what kind of arm Dwight Evans has. The ball hit Johnny in the back. Dwight had tried to throw it all the way on the fly. He overthrew his cutoff man, but he was showing off that great arm he has. Had it not hit him, it might have been close, fellas. Or it might have bounced over Petroselli's head in the dugout, too. Here comes Bench from another angle, right at you. There's the ball hitting him. Well, he winds up at third, Bench. Perez at first, one out. And Dave Concepcion moves in. He has grounded out twice and has been hit by a pitch ball. Got hit on the right elbow, his throwing elbow. He stayed in the game. Four run lead for the Reds in the last of the eight. Game six in Boston Saturday. Bill Lee, a left hander, against Jack Billingham, a right hander. Start at 12 30 Eastern Time. Daryl oh. Johnson's got his infield playing back in the first and third situation and one out. He can't afford to give up any more runs. Concepcion is a tough man to double up with his speed. 
And they have Geronimo on deck. Reds about hit the Red Sox eight to two. He fouls it back. Reds have had everything tonight. Base running, power, pitching, and defense. They've excelled in every department of the game thus far. One ball, one strike. Runners on first and third. Perez had a steal here the other night. Let's see if he tries to go again. McGee's pitch. That's outside. Two and one. Two and one to Dave Concepcion. Once again, Fisk, you can see him turn on home plate umpire George Maloney, upset with a call. Diego Segui was also upset. It puts him in a hole now, two balls and one strike. The Red Sox have a special charter plane. They'll fly out here after the game. I think the Reds leave tomorrow, don't they, Marty? 10 o'clock, Kurt. 2 1. Bow back. Let's hope we get better weather Saturday than we had last Sunday in Boston. That last swing, Concepcion's right arm flew off the bat. We can't tell if that's an indication or not whether that elbow is bothering him. Runners on first and third, one down. Reds are batting in the last of the eighth, leading five to one. Two two pitch to Concepcion. There goes the Red. Fly ball to right field. Bench is tagging. Evans has it. Here comes Bench. A throw by Evans. Cut off by his country. Sacrifice fly and a run batted in for Concepcion. And the Reds lead six to one. This is more the Cincinnati kind of team, Marty Brenneman, that you saw all year long, executing the way they have, getting the fly ball to drive home a run. Absolutely, Tony. As Kurt said, the Reds have uh, had a blend of everything tonight that, well, this club won 108 games during the regular season. When you talk about have they played well enough in this World Series up to this ball game? This pretty much tells the story of why this club had the kind of year it had. Geronimo has been blanked. 0 for 3. Perez at first, two down. Pitch is high. The Red Sox last hope in the ninth. Benicus, Doyle, and Yastrzemski facing left-hander Don Gullett. Of course, the Reds tonight aren't facing Louis Tion. It'll be interesting if we do get to Game 7 whether the Reds will have solved Tion's deliveries by that time. A 1 0 pitch. 2 0. Well, we know uh, Billingham pitched well at Fenway for a few innings with his sinker ball. Lee was excellent. That'll be a good matchup on Saturday. Lee throws a lot of sinking stuff, breaking ball pitches, and Billingham's a sinking ball pitcher. Let's talk all they want about that green wall. That wind's coming in. They'll have trouble hitting it again. There's a drive in the right center. Fred Lynn flags down. Three long outfield flies by the Reds there in the last of the eighth. One run, no hits, one left. We're going to the ninth. Cincinnati leading six to one. Preceding announcement was furnished to the public service by Major League Baseball. Don Gullett has spun a two hitter tonight. If Gullett pitches a two hitter, it'll be the first in a series game since Nelson Bryles' victory in 1971. It'll be Gullett's first series victory against one loss if he holds on. Well, it's odd, Marty, that. Uh, in the 72, 73, and 74 World Series, we did not have a complete game. Teon's already pitched two complete games in this series. And Gullup made a night, even though they have warm up action in the Cincinnati bullpen. 2 0 to Juan Bonicas. He's grounded out, popped up, and walked. Six one Cincinnati. And he's way high and wild with that one. Three and oh. Three balls, no strikes. Yeah. 
The 3 0 delivery. A strike with a fastball, 3 and 1. Dullard has walked only one. Given up two hits, three base runners against him tonight. Three and two. Have you seen him any better this year, Marty? No, I haven't, Kurt. I haven't seen him any better than this in two years, to be honest about it. Well, when he had to be great, he was great tonight. And there's a strikeout. Benicus is gone. Seven strikeouts for Don Gulla. This was a big one for him to give the Reds the lead if he holds on to it here to go back to Boston. The Red Sox would have had the momentum had they knocked Gullet out tonight. It's still not over yet, but he had just been overpowering. Seven strikeouts and a walk and only two hits. Benny Doyle, the triple, grounded out twice, has strike one to him. Don Larson, of course, pitched the perfect game. The only no hitter in World Series history. We've had four one hitters. Ed Ruhlbach of the Cubs in 1906. Claude Passo of the Cubs in 45. Foul ball out of play. Jim Lomberg of the Red Sox against the Cards in 67. And Floyd Bevins of the Yankees. He had his no hitter spoiled. Two down in the ninth inning by pinch hitter Cookie Lavagetto. And here's a masterpiece tonight by Gullet. The one two pitch. Bounding ball to the right side to Morgan. Makes the play to Perez and they're two down. Kurt, an interesting point as overpowering as Don Gullett has been tonight. Denny Doyle has been able to pull him to the right side three times. He has really put the bat on the ball better than any Red Sox player tonight. Jastrzemski. Sacrifice fly to right, line to center, and fouled out. 0 for 2. Some of the fans filing for the exit. He's rammed it into center field. Keep the Red Sox hope for the lie. With two down, he singles. Uh, six to one now. The Reds have eight hits. The Red Sox three hits. Carlton Fisk has struck out twice and lined out to left. Red Sox down to their final out at the top of the ninth inning. Don Gullet trying to nail it down. Ian Perez have been the stars tonight. There's a base hit in the left field by Carlton Fisk. And after two out, nobody on. Yastrzemski and Fisk both single. Here's Sparky Anderson coming out. He's getting some booze, some cheers. He skips the line. That's one of his superstitions. Kurt, when he comes out, it's normally going to mean that he's going to bring his pitcher back with him. Left-handed hitter Fred Lynn coming up next. He's got McEnany who has been throwing down there, but the way things look now, maybe Sparky's going to let him stay in. Funny, you know, I look like Johnny Bentis. How do you feel? Tell us, I'm all right. How Sparky gets a hand as he comes back into the dugout. Gullet has handled Lynn with a pop up, a strikeout, and a fly ball. Two down. That last out is always the hardest to get. Six to one, Cincinnati in the top of the ninth inning. Spensky at second, Fisk at first. The pitch is high to Lynn for a ball. Fill it again, and there's a high foul sailing into the seats. One ball, one strike to Fred Lynn. Reds did not have a complete game in the 72 series, nor this series so far. The Gullet is very close. His 1 1 pitch. Two ball, strike two. One and two. The 
The one two delivery. Dribbled foul. Don Gullett one strike away of sending the Reds into a three game to two lead. When the two teams go back to Boston for game six. Two down. Here's the one two delivery and he hits it fair down the right field line into the corner. Yastrzemski's in the score. Fisk goes to third and in the second is Lynn with a double. And the Red Sox have had three hits in a row after two out nobody on. An RBI for Lynn. That makes the score now six to two and Sparky Anderson getting ready to move out. A right hander Petroselli is due up next. Here's Anderson coming out. Don Gullett suddenly lost it in the ninth with two down nobody on. Yastrzemski hit a single to center. Fisk a single to left and Lynn a double into the right field corner. Well, coming in now. Hand. That is what a ovation for Don Gullett. Picked the whale of a ball game, Kurt. You said he lost it very, very quickly in the ninth inning. He struck out Benicas leading off on a good live fastball. Well, with two down, three straight hits, and well, again, we see Sparky Anderson go to his bullpen for the fourth time in this series and bring on right hander Raleigh Eastwood. There's a break in the action here at Cincinnati. The score, the Cincinnati Reds six, the Boston Red Sox two. When Don Gullett got the first two men out, Benicas and Doyle with nobody on. I think you'd have bet your home that he was going to pitch a complete game. And suddenly the Red Sox came to life with three hits in a row. And now Raleigh Eastwick is in for his fourth game of this series. He's allowed only one run in six and two thirds innings of relief. And he's facing Rico Petroselli, who has struck out and fly to center field twice. Fisk is at third, Lynn's at second, two down. Six to two, Cincinnati. Right. Enrico Petroselli. Petroselli's hit safely in every game except this one. Burleson, who'd hit safely in every game, has been checked tonight. But Doyle continues his streak. Foul ball back. Eastwick is two strikes to Rico Petroselli. Not a very happy Red Sox dugout. Oh and two. Two down. Two men in scoring position. Ninth inning. There it is. Eastwood stretch puts the belly out. And the Reds lead three games to two. In the ninth inning, the Red Sox had a hit. A one run, three hits, no errors. They left two. Don Gullett did the job for him tonight, aided by a big bat of Tony Perez, who slammed two homers and knocked in four. So they now will go to Boston Saturday afternoon with a one game lead.